Hey. So, uh, it's me again. And, uh, yeah, it's time for another MATLAB at midnight. I'm going to show you how to do um, Taylor series. Uh, let's see, get this going. Taylor series uh, in MATLAB. And uh, cleaning everything up real quick. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to learn how to use the symbolic toolbox. Uh, the Symbolic Toolbox is something that MATLAB has where it can do uh, things automatically for you, like differentiation and, uh, and integration and uh, all these good things, polynomial factoring and all that. Um, it, it comes in handy, but it, it's really, really slow, so you don't want to use it too much. Um, but for a demonstration of how to do Taylor series uh, with a computer, um, yeah, it's actually not too bad to start off. Okay? so. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. All right. So I uh, like good programming practice. Uh, let's go ahead and start a comment and say what we're gonna do. Uh, so here we use the symbolic toolbox uh, to uh, make. A Taylor series from a given function. Okay, so I uh, so here variables are a little bit different. Uh, you have to define them as sims variables. I think I'm going to be flipping back and forth to the MATLAB manual here uh, just to make sure. So yeah, so here's an example uh, from the MATLAB MathWorks uh, website. Uh, it's a really handy resource if you have any questions about MATLAB or where to find code. Uh, and so um, here. Uh, we're going to define a symbolic variable, and I'll just scalp this. Okay, so basically we have a sims variable x, and I uh, and then we're making a function f, I uh, which is basically a sine of five times x. F itself becomes a symbolic uh, function, I uh, and um, yeah, I uh, just I uh, inherited from x. So five, x, 5 times x seems as good as anything. Uh, so what I'm looking for is I want to do uh, differentiation. Uh, but we need to do a lot of differentiations. But here, let's just see what happens. So if I say uh, diff f, what do we get? No, it's not up by a semicolon here because I want to show up in the command window. All right, so I push play. Uh, it says it's running Taylor series. And uh, yeah, so it tells me I get 5 cosine of 5 times x. That's exactly what I expect with a chain rule. Okay, and uh, let's say diff answer. What do I get? All right, cool. And I can diff answer again. What do I get? Ha! So you can just keep taking derivatives. Now, we know that uh, for <clears throat> uh, making a Taylor series, we're going to have to take a lot of uh, derivatives. And so I'm actually going to make uh, a whole vector uh, of these. And, um, and yeah, let's see if this ends up working out. This gets finicky sometimes, so so we'll see. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you a really bad way of uh, making uh, vectors, and uh, I, it's, it works in a pinch, and, but it slows MATLAB down a bit. Um, 20, magic number. I did 20 last time. Why don't I do 20 again? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, uh, F, and now I'm going to take... Uh, Let's go from 2 to 20, uh, just so, because we'll consider f as like the first one. Um, so I'm going to say f is equal to f, uh, but then I want to append uh, underneath it. So a semicolon means to drop down to a new row. And uh, I'm going to say diff f here. And, uh, and so then it's going to iterate over and over again. So the first time it's going to take the sign, and it's going to put the 5 cosine underneath it. And then it's going to do that here. So why don't we just do, run this until we get to, say, 
uh, four, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So uh, put a semicolon on this, and we'll call it in a minute. So let's push play. All right, now let's see what F is. So F, oh, uh, that's not good. Um, yeah, no, you don't want to do that. So what I did, uh, so I first started with just uh, putting F here, and then um, since I diffed F and I added it here, it, uh, now it's um, too long and then adds another one. It was just doubling in length each time. That is definitely not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's see if I, I jump to the end of my vector, if that works out better. Maybe not, but we'll see. All right, so let's try this again. So I'm only diffing the end, differentiating the last vector. Diff, by the way, is taking a symbolic derivative. All right, let's see what I got now. F, there we go. That's more like what I expected. Uh, so I, I should have a length four vector, and there we go. So what I'm doing here is, I, and let's see if I just go from two to two. What do I get? Uh, so here, F. So if I just go iterate, you just do one loop, it takes f, and it takes the derivative of f, and it puts it on the bottom, here. All right, so it takes f, and it puts the derivative underneath. Now next one should, when I put f end, it should only look at this guy, and then it'll put it underneath that. So if I go to three, and now let's call it, see it, it took that last guy, and it took its derivative. Okay, good. Now let's do this. 20 times. Boop. All right, F. Boop. There you go. Big old function. All right. So now what I want is I want to be able to evaluate F. What I could do is I could say eval F at, I want to replace X with, say, 2. Let's see if that works. Uh, here, let's put it down here. Okay, too many, uh, too many arguments. Um, how do I evaluate? Again, <laughs> uh, here. help eval. By expression, hmm. say help sim eval. says use substitution instead. Okay. All right, so help subs. All right, so this is a quick way to get help on a function that you know about if you want to see what it does real quick. All right, so it's saying that uh, subs s old new. All right, so it replaces old with new in the symbolic expression. Uh, so, Okay, and it looks like since we only have one variable, I can probably just use subs s and then some value. Okay, let's try that. So I'm going to say subs f comma 2. What do I get? That oh, looks like I actually value something. So, yeah, we know it should be sine of 10. Okay, that works good. Um, there we go. Okay, so it, it just put it in there. Well, I'm a little uh, confused on why it didn't just tell me what sine of 10 was. But I'm not going to ask too many questions, I guess. Um, but the truth is, uh, using a symbolic toolbox, it takes time. Uh, and it's not very efficient. And so if you have to use it a lot in like a loop or something, you want to do something else. And so um, you want to make a MATLAB function. I'm trying to see, remember if I do it, make MATLAB function. Not what I'm looking for. So, make map. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so what you can do instead is you can say, I want to make my lab function of f. And now, I can say f of, say, 1. Or, well, I can say, well, it's wherever this is. So I should say, really, 
I f, I'll call it function, is equal to this. There you go. So I can say f function of, say, 2, and see what we get, and it gives me proper numbers. Okay, I like that better. Those are really big numbers. Uh, okay, so, all right, so that's what I'm going to do now. So uh, what was the code? If you press up in the command window, it'll show you previous things you called. All right, so it looked like I did MATLAB function, so I'll copy that. And so I'll say g is equal to MATLAB function f. Okay, cool. All right, we figured that bit out. So I, now let's go ahead and um, make a, uh, a Taylor series. So uh, we're gonna basically make the first 20 terms. So uh, it's gonna take some finagling. All right, so first thing we need to do is we need to make, uh, we have all the derivatives and we can evaluate them at any particular point. Um, so what I can do after that is I wanna make the factorial bit. So zero factorial, one over zero factorial, one over one factorial, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, let me see if there, how do I know how to do that? Um, so let's do this. Um, so I'm gonna do, I think it's, I think the function itself is just factorial that I'm looking for. So say factorial three, what is that gonna be? Six, awesome. All right, so uh, fact vector. So I'm gonna make a vector out of factorials. Uh, so I'm going to uh, basically make uh, the numbers 1 through 20. I think that should work out. Yep, 1 through 20 gives me that. So I'm making a row vector, and I'm going to apply the factorial command to that, and I'm going to do 1 dot divide by. And let's see what that gives me. Uh, here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So I should start off with just 1. Uh, so factorial one, factorial, oh, but we need to start at zero. So uh, I'm gonna start at zero here. And, uh, and if we're starting with zero up here, then that means if I wanna get the first 20 derivatives, then I need to put 21 here. And so then this should go up to 20. Yeah, there we go. Okay, off by one errors. Okay, so let's throw that in. All right, now let's see. So I should have two ones at the very beginning of this. So going back, so I have one and one, good. Then two fact, one over two factorial is five. One over three factorial is one over six. And it says uh, 0 0.16666, yeah, it seems about right. Okay, so that seems to be giving me the right numbers. Uh, by the time we get to 20 factorial or 21 factorial, MATLAB seems to have given up. So the last contribution we have is this guy. Okay, good. All right, now we need to make x to the n. Hmm. All right, so if you want to take a number and you want to raise it to the nth power, and you want to have a whole lot of these, so this is going to be really important for polynomial interpolation, this is something you can do. So two dot exponent, and then I, we can put in parentheses uh, 0 to uh, 5. Now watch this. It goes 0th power of 2, 1st power of 2, 2nd power of 2, 3rd power of 2, 4th power of 2, and 5th power of 2. There we go. So that is uh, 2 to the 5th. So that's a whole vector of those guys. So uh, we're going to need to attach them to all this, but the thing is we need to make a, a function out of it. We have a function that gave us this, and that's fine. And so now we're just going to say I want to have uh, my center point A is equal to something. Let's pick a number, 2. Okay. Now I, I'm going to have to come up with something to uh, that my functions all evaluated A. So I'm going to say evaluated at A is equal to G A. All right. And now let's make our Taylor series. Taylor series is equal to, now this is how you make an inline function. Uh, let's not say x, because we have another x up there, we'll call it t. Um, so I'm gonna take t, and I'm going to take this here is a is 
here. So if I put A in here, so I have two. I, now if I t show you what I get with this, it's just a... That, oh, I haven't even run this code yet. Here, so let's put this in. Now we have G. Now, let me show you what I get. Uh, I get a collection of points. Uh, not answer. Uh, let's see what I get. So I get a column of uh, points here. Okay. All right, so now let's do some MATLAB magic. MATLAB inherently knows how to do matrix multiplication and uh, inner products and whatnot. So uh, we're gonna take advantage of that. First of all, I, I'm gonna have, um, I wanna multiply these guys times all of these guys. Now, these were all rows and these are all vectors. That's sort of a problem. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy and entry-wise multiply. So that's what this does. It matches up each entry when you put a period on it and does it just on the, uh, the entries themselves times uh, this guy. Um, but this should be a, uh, a column vector to match this or this should be a row. I'm gonna make this guy a row. So now we have a row vector times a row vector uh, when you include the, uh, the apostrophe, let's put parentheses around that just to make sure. And so now this ends up giving you a row vector all together, uh, where that is where they we have multiplied entry-wise all these guys times these guys. So uh, now let's see what happens uh, when I multiply this vector by a new column. So we need uh, we have a row times a column, and this column needs to be all of our uh, x values. So uh, x to zero, x or t value. So t to zero, t one. And my cats are getting interested in my lights. Get lost, guys. Okay, sorry, I just screwed up my production. I uh, and so uh, basically we want to take a row of the this row, multiply it by our column of all our powers of t. So I'm going to take t. And I uh, raise it to uh, one, uh, zero to twenty. But then I need to take this and make it. This will make it a row vector, but I need it to be a column vector. So I put a uh, apostrophe on it. Okay, so that's a lot of fuss just to get um, get that. But now I'll have my Taylor series, All right? And. Um, so yeah, so if I push play, just make sure it works, and it doesn't. Uh, Taylor series, the name of, and the script. Oh, oops. Uh -huh. uh, so I'll put Taylor underscore series. It's the same name as the the file, and that's a problem. So um, there we go. Okay. So now, uh, here we go. Uh, we want to plot this. So I'm going to plot, I uh, say, um, negative, I'd say zero to, uh, we want to go all the way up to say four, I guess, and we'll go at steps of 0 0.1. We're centering at two, so let's put two right at the center. And so, and then we're going to look, take a look at the Taylor series. Uh, ooh, that might not be supported. Sometimes this gets finicky. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and make an output variable y. All right, so now let's see how I do that. So to make a quick y, I have 0, uh, 1 to uh, the length of whatever we got from Taylor, uh, <laughs> well, the length of the Taylor. <sighs> Sorry, I want to make as many entries of y as there are going to be in my inputs, so here. So this is a row vector uh, that matches how many x's I have. Put a semicolon there. And uh, now I'm going to make a for loop. 
i going from 1 to the length of y, i and end here. So for however many elements there are in y, I'm going to do this. And so I'm going to make a Taylor series, put it here, and I'm going to want to call these values. So I'm going to call these my time points and put that here. So I, so I want to evaluate the Taylor series at the time point i, where the time points just run from zero to four, and um, and then uh, I want to basically I can go ahead and replace this with time points, and then we'll see what the values I get. Uh, where y of i now contains all of these guys. Okay, push play. And I get an error. Inputs must be scalar. Oh, whoops. <laughs> um, that's what happens when we do this at midnight. Here, put the time points first. Now we're going to take the length of the time points. I'm just going to make it here. Sorry, it ends up being convoluted. Uh, trying to just do this all off the cuff. But here you go. Okay. Uh, thank you, MATLAB. I don't know why you're telling it. I guess MATLAB thought I was a noob, and because uh, of all the errors I made. Let's see. So what's going on? So it looks like we have some sort of uh, craziness going on here, and that should definitely not be happening. Um, divided by all my factorials. A two. Hmm. Let's just do this down to, say, uh, 3. And if that if we're only going to the first 3 entries, uh, stop that at 2. So let's stop at 2. And let's try that. Push play. Alright, so that's getting way too big. So I have an error somewhere. Uh, so I did all those changes. Uh, just get it back, and um, let's see what what my problem was. So I'm taking derivatives. All right. I uh, oh, right. Um, this should have been t minus two raised to all those powers. Now let's see. There we go. That's more like what I expected. So we forgot to adjust our Taylor series center uh, to be at two. And so uh, by doing that, uh, now we can actually get the proper things. Okay, so this looks like a, a plausible approximation of sine. Uh, it kind of screws up at zero and four, uh, but not too bad. Let's make this a little bit more modular. And so uh, degree of polynomial. And I'll say, I. Uh, so here we had 20, right? Um, so uh, here we had degree of polynomial plus one, and it was 21 there, and degree of polynomial here, degree of polynomial here, and now I should be able to just adjust this to say three. Oop, there we go. All right, so now we got a, a cubic there, all right? Let's see what happens when I say 10. I get something. Uh, it's not something I like, though. Uh, it still gets really bad up here and here. I, I bet, though, if I zoom in in my lab, uh, so here, and there, it, it does behave uh, locally, but it doesn't look like it's converging very quickly. Um, so let's go up to 40 and uh, take a look. Oh, good. So at 40, it looks like it's almost exactly sine. Okay, you'd hope by the time you get to polynomial degree 40, you're doing good. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Okay, so uh, that was Taylor polynomials. Uh, Maybe a little bit convoluted for uh, doing it. It sort of happens we do it off the cuff. But I gave you an idea of how to do it. use a symbolic toolbox. And if you follow and you pick through the code, uh, you'll see um, how to do a lot of stuff. Anyway, thank you for putting up for me for, it uh, looks like, 25 minutes or so. And um, yeah, we'll call it there. Take care.